Well, the Rays blew it on Ulysses' birthday, no less. Not cool. And uh, perhaps it was the first Kevin uh, crash moment of the year. Let's talk about it right now. You are Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Sombrano. And we're the host of the Locked On Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making us your very first listen every day. Be sure to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Locked On Rays. You can also find us on X and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And email us anytime, LockedOnRays at gmail.com. Well, you wouldn't have thought it was a pitcher's duel by the final score, but it was amongst the starters anyway, Patrick Sandoval and Zach Eflin, respectively. Uh, the Rays lose seven to three. Uh, they are nine and eight on the year. The Angels are eight and eight on the year. Um, interesting game, I guess, is one way to put it. Yeah, it had a little bit of everything, right? Um, had bombs, had good defensive plays, had yeah. tremendous pitching. And some doubtful moves. Um, but overall, I mean, it, 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 the first six innings were, were very entertaining baseball, for sure. Uh, look, Zach Eflin has made adjustments when he, he goes out there after a start that doesn't go well, yes. which is good to see. Um, you just hope that the consistency can, can win out ultimately. But I do like that. Uh, this starts after he's had a rough time, a rough go. He comes out and is really good. Uh, this time, six and a third in 76 pitches. I mean, that is incredibly efficient uh, right. to me. He he looked like he could go a little bit further, uh, getting some trouble there in the seventh. But uh, 76 pitches, not allowing a single run. Uh, it was a very good start for Zach. Yeah, yeah. Um... Zach was fantastic, and hopefully this matriculates into multiple solid outings, not a Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde situation where you have a blow-up game and then you have uh, a great uh, water painting there. So uh, hopefully this is a trend for Zach Eflin going forward. And talk about command and control. He had that in spades. He was locating the sinker, the curveball, the cutter exactly where he wanted on the yeah. edges, on the corners, versus lefties and righties. Uh, as it got later in the game, he got a little bit more cutesy with moving the ball up and in to some extent. But uh, and, and also with that, um, credit to the defense behind him for making some really key plays. Isak Paredes essentially stealing a double from Mike Trout. Mike Trout uh, kicked it back to the Rays later on in the game, which we'll get to. Uh, Yandi making good defensive plays, Mead making good defensive plays, Eflin fielding his own position. Uh, it was like target practice for some of the Angels hitters just going right after him and him being able to recover and get the out, I think, was uh, really impressive there. So, all right, uh, do you want to get into it? The uh, the Kevin Crash moment. Yeah, let's do that. Um, okay. So, men on second, correct? Men on second, not, yeah. Base open on first, right? And the only, the only unanimous Hall of Famer that is on the field comes up to bat. Yeah. I've I've heard BA say this line since he started doing color commentary from 2010. He says, and he'll say it multiple times throughout the season, when you prepare a game. You look at the other team's lineup and you highlight the one guy that will not beat you, that should yeah. not beat you. He says this multiple times throughout the season, and it's correct. There's one guy in that lineup that you should highlight and says and say, I'm not going to let this guy beat me. In the Angels lineup, <laughs> if, we, if we take a, a, a family feud type survey, there would only be one answer, just like there can only be one Highlander. Okay? Right. It's Mike Trout. So there's the opportunity to not have to face this unanimous Hall of Famer, and you choose not to. All I want 
which by the way, they did ask. I don't remember if, if it was uh Trisha or or Topkin who asked him after the game, like, hey, you had this uh possibility of of walking trout, setting it up, like why didn't you? And the only thing that we got from Kevin Cash was I'm okay with not walking trout there. I know it's useless to complain because it's never going to change how these post-game conferences go, but it's so frustrating that there is not just one question after he says this to just get the train of thought. Why is there not well, just one question that says, why are you okay with not walking Trout there? And if it's some strategy or some numbers that they don't want to delve down into the public, then say that, hey, we, we have some information and we'd really rather not. We we know we have some database stuff that you know we, we'd rather not uh, to say, but we're okay with not walking Trout there. Fine. Okay. But I really would like to just get the, okay, but why are you okay with yeah. not walking him there? And there because isn't that. The media just moves on. Oh, he gave his answer. All right. Time to move on to something else. He didn't really feel like delving into a soliloquy there. That's the difference between the Tampa Bay media market and the New York media market, Philadelphia, Chicago, some of these harder gruff cities they they'll go after you and uh you wonder if he was playing or or managing in one of those markets how that would have been approached so what you're telling me is that there was a runner on second with less than two outs and mike trout was at the plate correct i think so yes so i see a double whammy there i see you have an open bag to walk Mike Trout, take the bat out of his hands, and you set up the double play ball to end the inning, theoretically. Exactly. Exactly. And it's just frustrating. Like, again, you can you can make as many moves as you want, and, and that's okay. Like, it's uh, you're the manager, right? Like, you, you can do. Yeah. But I just – I don't like – and this, this word might come as a little bit too harsh – I don't think it is, but if if it is, please tell me in the comments. The pompous attitude. Couldn't care. Could I don't care for it. Oh, I'm, I'm okay uh, with not walking Nash. out there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Come on. I it, it's just a little bit too much for me. Uh look, he is an incredibly talented manager. He's shown that time and time again. Um, one of the best in the game. But one of the best in the game can always make mistakes, too. Yeah. He is a human being, people. And for those seal clappers that are on Twitter, <laughs> on Twitter, like there are so many Kevin Cash defenders, as well as the other ones that are like, Kevin Cash is the worst thing possible, which is just acid. Yeah, there, there's no middle ground, evidently. And I think we're the middle ground. I think we're the ones that say, yeah. that's good. That's bad. We should call this out. We should praise this. Yeah. But on Twitter, everything is just like at the end of the spectrum. And uh, basically everything in life on Twitter is ends of the spectrum. There's no yes. nuance. Um, but yeah, that, that just bothered me. The quote and then and then not having that pushback for that because I think it's I think it's a fair question to say, yeah. why are you not okay? What why are you okay with not walking a future unanimous Hall of Famer? Yeah. And not just yeah, he's no doubt gonna be a first ballot hall of famer and anybody that votes against them should have their id card uh <laughs> taken and ripped up and um thrown to bits um and here's the thing mike trout it would be one thing if like over the course of time over the course of mike trout's career that for one reason or another he struggled at the trop he couldn't hit at the trop or he struggled against said pitcher but mike trout every time he's played the rays and been at the trop He's like done damage. More or less, we are going to get a guaranteed dinger for Mike Trout, and he's most likely going to flirt with a cycle over the course of a three or four game series. Like, yeah, that's just that's just what we're getting from Mike Trout. And to your point, even further, highlighting, circling a name on the opposing lineup. I get it if it was previous iterations of the angels where you have Shohei Otani to contend with, but Mike Trout's really the only game in town right now. Yeah. Taylor Ward's okay. Rendon's coming around, but those guys don't strike fear like a Mike Trout and or a Shohei Otani would be similarly to when the Rays face 
I don't know, the Yankees, and you have three names that you have to circle with Aaron Judge and Juan Soto and Giancarlo Stanton, and I'm sure there's some others in there. Like, it's pick your poison at that point, but here was a prime opportunity to not let Mike Trout beat you, and he single-handedly beat you because after that moment, we could basically go back and say, even though it was only a 2-1 game at that point, that the wind was sucked out of the ballpark because not only was it just a, a home run, like it was, I think the hardest home run that he hit this year at 113 mile per hour, exit velocity, 30 degree uh, launch angle, 420 feet. It was a blank missile. Yeah. And honestly, I didn't even think like it was that bad of a pitch from Phil Maton. I mean, the curveball got the bottom of the zone. It's just Mike Trout's going to do Mike, Mike Trout things. I guess that, Hey, maybe we need to go back to the Joe Madden days. And even when the bases are loaded, you walk Barry Bonds. Maybe we need to do the same thing with Mike Trout. Uh, I'd, I'd poo poo more of uh, Maton and what he did, uh, giving up the uh, the double to Matt Thace, who, I mean, that was just a, a four seam sinker right down the heart of the plate that the guy tattooed uh, for a line drive. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, it's uh, head scratching for sure. The situation head scratching. Uh, there's much more to talk about Phil Maton, but first got to let you guys know about Monopoly go. Cause sometimes we've all been there as a player or as a fan, it's, you know, the halftime and it's not looking good. You're feeling low. You're not sure if the team can pull out a win, but you dig deep, you lift your head up and say to yourself, time to get back in the game, pull off some bank heist, take as much, of my friend's money as I possibly can. And that's right. I'm talking about Monopoly Go, okay? It lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches and the biggest empire. It's a Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buds. There's so much to do that you can play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. You can make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Well, that's a little bit much. And you can charge other players' rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to get extra rewards and climb the leaderboard. So, hey, guess, guess what? Get back get back out there, okay? Put on your game face and download Monopoly Go, now free on the App Store or Google Play today. We also want to tell you about Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace in Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. With killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seats, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So take. The guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. It's that easy. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On MLB L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off your first purchase. That's like uh, free parking at the Trop during a home game. Uh, terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On MLB L O C K E D O N M L B for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. Speaking of parking, Ulysses, you giving me the parking hookup insight mm -hmm. and proprietary information has been the best thing ever. Uh, utilized it for the uh, dog day game on Sunday. Man, I, I'm I feel like I'm really sticking it to the raise. I know. By not giving them my $20, $25. They may have raised it for all I know. It's I know still, opening day was probably like 50 bucks. It, uh, yeah, actually, that, that place I told you about, they did raise it only for opening day, yep. which, I mean, hey, get, get your money, baby. Yeah, um, get your cash. But it's such such a great deal, hookup. So I'm glad that you enjoyed it. I'm glad to share that with you. And, uh, and again, it's just like uh, like you said, mafia, right? Like, yeah, don't talk about it, baby. Right. And one more thing, it's the gift that keeps on giving because getting in and out of that area uh so much easier than yes trying to deal with the trap parking lot but you know so, who's upset you know Stu's gonna be upset oh uh, Stu's texting me now yeah he's on Stu, our... i cannot 
No, you've got to like Venmo me or something if I'm going to tell you about this parking hookup. Oh, so I, I can't tell. And it's got to be a, a notable amount that <laughs> hundred bucks ain't going to do it. I I want, I want like season tickets for me to give up this, uh, this parking hookup. Yeah, so, come on, Stu. Um, yeah. Uh, it's so unfortunate about this game because you ruin such a beautiful outing by Zach Eflin from the bullpen again. And this seems to be a theme early on in the season. It's crazy. We're like in bizarro world. We thought we'd have question marks about the starters. And here we are. I mean, there are still some question marks about the starters, but the bullpen is a total mess and question mark as of right now. And honestly, when you said Kevin crash moment, I was thinking, okay, where are you going with that? And you mentioned the trout situation. That makes sense. I also thought you were going to allude or make a nod to maybe taking out Zach Eflin or maybe not keeping in Jason Adam for another batter or two before making the switcheroo, or in this case, just going to Phil Maton at all with his right. I mean, it's been rough for Maton. As a Ray, eight appearances so far, and three of them have just been the worst. Yeah, just just the worst kind of night for a reliever, which is tough, man. I mean, he, it's a new it's a new gig for him, so new teammates, so you don't really have that rapport, and you're sticking it up there three out of eight times. That's not a good ratio for a high leverage reliever. Yeah, especially one that's making six and a half million. That's the other thing: the pressure of you're like essentially the highest paid bullpen arm and you're in a team that this is penned and it's in so like if you were in the yankees or the red sox or you know dodgers like you wouldn't be making that much money but in a team that doesn't spend money six and a half million go a long long way and right. you're that guy so three out of eight just horrid starts um you're talking about the whole bullpen you know buddy evan klosky put out a tweet yesterday he said entering tonight race reliever posted a uh MLB worst 623 ERA, 65, 65 innings pitch, and 45 earned runs. Also own a 14.4% walk rate, the highest mark in the AL and second highest in MLB. Those marks will continue to dip after this one. Hard to believe this bullpen is this bad. Yeah. Well, it is this bad so far. It is this yeah, bad so far. It's interesting because it would be understandable if – Phil Maton pulled a Blake Snell and was signed right before the season. And hey, he didn't have a chance to work himself in spring training and he's still getting his experience underneath him. But he was signed before spring training or before, right yeah. thereabouts at the beginning. I mean, mid February. So I think that's a, a long enough lead time to get you going there. And is it too early to talk about him being a bust or do we need to give him more time? Because um, there aren't many instances of the Rays giving a player this amount of money and then it blowing up in their face. I think about Yoshi Satsugo, Pat Burrell, perhaps again, long season, but this might be another one that you add to the list. I think this one is now going to be talked about now. Like after this, after this game, I think he, Phil Maton is on the, on the spotlight for race fans of like, okay, we're putting an eye on you. What are you doing next? Like he's on not the crosshairs, but like now he's on the talk about of like, okay, well, who is this guy? Is he going to be good for us? Is he not going to be good? Is he going to be a bust? Is he not? I think it's too early to just deem him a bust or anything like that. Obviously eight outings. Uh, you know, if you're expecting him to be healthy, it should be a season that he has 40 plus outings. Right. So a lot, a lot to go through, but it hasn't started uh, in a in a in a good or stable fashion yeah. whatsoever. And yesterday, really, that was that was rough. Uh, completing one inning, facing nine, but letting five runners um, go around um, the bases just not not a fun night for Phil Maton. Yeah. And and you could tell, you know, you saw after the Mike Trout home run, you said the the kind of spirits you know get sucked out of the trop right. throughout that whole maton outing it was just like you know stabbing that vibe 
out yeah. of the trop. You know, it's already out of the bodies, but now you're like just like stabbing it. It's yeah, it was rough, man. It's unfortunate. Um, and again, it's not like he's being put into a role that he's unfamiliar or uncomfortable with. It'd be one thing if, hey, you're our six and a half million dollar man. You're now our closer from now until the end of the contract. Like he's still a mid reliever, seventh inning guy, sixth yeah. inning guy. Is it really that different from what he was doing in previous organizations like the Astros? I, I just really would like to get to the bottom of what the issue is. And uh, unsurprisingly, if you look at his savant page, it is ugly. There is a lot of dark blue, which is not a good thing. Uh, strikeout rate, not there. Walk rate, not there. Hard hit percentage, not there. Barrel percentage, not there. Uh, not much is going right for Phil Maton right now. Not a lot. And his left on base percentage, the strand rate, which is one of my favorite statistics, especially for for relievers, 57 percent. Hmm. Not good. Just put no, that in right. like like <laughs> only 57 percent of his runners are stranded people. Well, most of them are. Well, not most of them. A lot of them are going around the bags and scoring. Not good. again. I mean, maybe what they have to do is just protect him from the top or middle of the lineup like if they can weasel it around to where all right you're facing the seven eight nine hitters and see if he can build up some confidence that way or just absolutely put him in the most fortuitous situations uh to perform but Ooh, now mean, that you say that i have a question for you okay. for 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 that reason of like what you should be expecting to face but first, I think you got to tell us something. Yes. Uh, are you struggling to close deals or close games? Maybe like the Rays. Uh, selling, business to business selling is tougher than ever. And that's why we want to tell you about LinkedIn Sales Navigator. LinkedIn Sales Navigator is a sales intelligence platform that helps professionals effectively prospect and engage high value customers, drive higher revenue and increase sales performance. Sales Navigator helps you target the right uh, right buyers, surface key signals, and shows you hidden allies so you can find those buyers that are most likely to convert. Fueled by LinkedIn's 1 billion member platform, Sales Navigator gives you the most up-to-date first-party data, enabling you to unlock conversations with the people that matter. So right now, Remember, this is very important. You can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. Uh, locked on. Sorry, I've, <laughs> there's been a lot of live reads in this episode, so you need to get them straight here. This gives me an opportunity to uh, get on the right track here. LinkedIn.com slash locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. That is LinkedIn.com slash locked on, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N. For a 60-day free trial, let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. So you talked about should mail, uh, should mail, should mail Phaeton. Should Phil mm -hmm. Maton be, you know, facing the the lower part of the lineup instead of the the top in yesterday's game i'm trying to find the uh yeah so he faced zach Neto, anthony rendon trout taylor ward sano yeah all the top yeah all the top of the lineup i know it was the eighth inning are you okay with in that situation knowing that Phil Maton maybe is struggling, would you have put Pete Fairbanks in the eighth? That's actually what eighth? I was thinking. I was That was my consideration. As much as we've been poo-pooing on Pete Fairbanks, right? I would a million times rather see Pete Fairbanks than Phil Maton in that situation. Yeah, yeah me too. I think So that, what, that's what, kind of the, the vantage point of where you have to think outside the box a little bit. And this is an organization... All they do is think outside the box. Thank you. Walk so, my so, trout. Bring your closer in the eighth inning. Uh, you know, try something different. 
But why not? I But see, this is the thing. Again, maybe, again, it's not the New York market. So you won't get these questions, which is very frustrating. But what what's the train of thought of putting in Phil Maton there and not Pete Fairbanks? Is it is it numbers against? Is it... Is it strategy? Is or is it just the fact that which this would really scare me and 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 get me really um, sad about the situation? Is is Fairbanks now like don't use me? Other That's than what Mike? I was thinking. There there is no way, especially because he is on a multi year contract. Like he's getting paid and getting his money regardless. And maybe there is some incentive tied to saves, but. I feel like that's kind of the modus operandi of the Rays is we don't care who you are or where you are in your career. We're going to put you where we want to put you. We right. don't have the designated roles. That's why 12 guys get save opportunities. Uh, you know, a but year has that two. shifted? Has that mentality shifted since Maybe. Pete Fairbanks has evolved into who he is now? And they're like, okay, well now he's a closer and we can't, Ego, there's an ego trip sort of thing of like we can't we don't feel comfortable with with using him other than the ninth and that would make me upset honestly it really would and that's honestly a question that maybe the media should ask kevin cash of why didn't you use pete fairbanks is pete fairbanks exclusively a ninth inning guy now so far this season has be has he been used in anything but the ninth inning okay from the top of the dome here a la harry mack yeah. i don't believe so um, he could maybe, but I, I don't think so. I think it's only okay. been the ninth inning. All right. So well. look, and I don't want this to be like a media bashing thing. Like it's not that at all. It's just frustration that look, it's easy for us to just, Hey, why don't you ask this question? Why don't you ask this question? I get it. Um, it's a little bit more difficult to do it in front of the person that you're going to be yeah. asking that question, obviously. And on and, deadline and it's a late night and you're just trying to get your story published. And there's a rapport thing, right? Like, if you yeah. keep asking questions like this, is Kevin Cash going to um, answer you when you want, or give you another right. uh, question, or is the press, uh, or is the press guy going to be like, "Oh, you can't talk to Yandi today"? You know, like those things matter. You have to have good relationships with yeah. with people. So I understand that, but ultimately, that's the gig. Yeah, that that really is. That's where you need a guy with. Um, I I don't want to say a a disability or something where they don't care what they say or who they offend. They will still ask that question. You need that type of bulldog in the room. So yeah. somebody without, um, uh, in, in Spanish, we say, um, sin pelos en la lengua, which means without hairs on your go. tongue. If you don't have hairs in your tongue, you say whatever you want kind of feel thing. That's what you need. That kind of that kind of person that will just say the things. And is that person going to be given interviews and all that? Maybe not. Yeah. But that's the thing. Like you have to. Why? Why did you ever think about using Pete Fairbanks in the eighth instead of Phil Maton? No, I didn't. Why, why not? Yeah. Exactly. Um. No, that's that's a good point there. Uh. All right. Before we wrap up here, want to try to end it on a quasi fun, funny note. Um. <laughs> It was your birthday yesterday, so happy belated birthday. You are 48 years old. You are as old as Kevin Cash. Um, just kidding. You're not. Um, quick question. If you had one birthday wish for the race this year, with the qualifier, it cannot be a World Series title. Anything but that. Mm. What would you want from the race or about the Rays this season to come to life? I would really like to win two postseason series. Okay. Because is that fair? Because like, no, I'm fair. thinking it, you got to, we're probably not going to win the division. You win the wild card, you win ALDS, and now you're talking ALDS. Like that's all I want. I want us to get out of the damn wild card series and get out of the damn divisional series. Like, yeah, I will take a loss ALCS. I will take that to the bank. It'll be fun. Just to give you some hope in more than a week or more than a couple days of really being able to simmer and enjoy uh, a 
multiple playoff series. Yeah, and I, I know it's, uh, you know, March just passed. So, you know, we still have the March Madness taste in our tongue. Um, final four, baby. It would just be nice to be in the final four. So if I had a wish, it would be to win two playoff series. I like that answer. If it was me, aside from that, um, so the Rays have multiple Cy Youngs. They have silver sluggers. They have managers of the year. They have comeback player of the year. They have gold gloves, platinum glove galore. Um, One thing they are missing from the mantelpiece is an MVP winner. Mm -hmm. So that would be my uh, mid-year birthday gift, I guess. That would be great. That would be fantastic. I subscribe to that as well. I like it. And once that happens, maybe the Rays should not just have a wild card banner, but a (laughs) banner for those types of awards. You know, I don't know if they, I don't think they have that at the trop. They don't. That list, your gold gloves, your MVPs, not that there is an MVP yet. Cy Young's all that. I think that would be a nice little touch there somewhere. Just saying. All right. Uh, I know you all didn't enjoy the game, but I hope you all enjoyed the episode and hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe and we will talk to you tomorrow.